This is a report to the Good Shepherd Lutheran Church McKees Rocks Church Council for the meeting on November 11th, 2020. It's been updated uh, and expanded slightly and recorded in January 6th, 2021. I'll try to point out any new slides, um, but nothing better in the way of news. First, let's start with the history of McKee's Rocks and our congregation. Uh, we were originally known as the Mount Calvary Lutheran Church, uh, adjacent to the cemetery up on Middletown Road. We were founded by nine members, presumably in their 20s and 30s, not in their 60s, 70s, and 80s as we have today, sadly. This is the map of the original cemetery. You can see the original building. The cemetery itself has greatly expanded, and the building is no longer there. It was finally lost to fire and demolished in the early 20th century. We had a second building on Furnace Street, no pun intended, and that has since uh, disappeared as well. Our third building is on Russellwood Avenue, and today it's known as Good Shepherd Lutheran Church, right across the street from the Stow Rocks High School, built in 1926, nearly a century ago. And it's been the scene of many happy occasions, including my parents' wedding is 60 years ago, and uh, my aunt and uncle there, flanking the side, and uh, friends, uh, all under the age of 30, uh, back in the good old days. Uh, it's also been the scene of worship and baptisms and funerals for countless um, of our uh, Lutheran brethren over the decades. Our congregation is the product of closures and mergers. Other congregations have come to an end and joined us. Uh, in 1968, for example, St. John's uh, merged with us to form Good Shepherd. And in 2015, uh, we welcomed Emmanuel's Lutheran Church from Bellevue. So <clears throat> every congregation has a lifespan. Every congregation has a finite time on the earth. And it's time for new congregations to form and to proceed from that point. In fact, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America has published what amounts to a handbook on closure and mergers. They tell us some congregations of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America are going through challenging times. It is possible that your congregation is in this category and you are struggling with the reality that the congregation you love has been slowly losing its capacity to engage the community and sustain effective ministry. Your congregation may be in the final stages of its life cycle. And this very wise document goes on to remind us, <clears throat> for struggling congregations, the fight to stay alive is often seen as a badge of honor and an act of final obedience. That's from uh, the preface. It goes on to say that, in reality, a congregation is a fellowship of a baptiz baptized that has a life cycle, a beginning, middle, and end. The congregation in the book of Acts has not survived into the present day, but the fruit and seeds of their witness live on today in hundreds of thousands of congregations and millions of Christians in present time. External forces, such as changed landscapes, loss of population, aging, and the rapid pace of change make institutions vulnerable. Internal dynamics, such as resistance to change, long service by the same workers, mismanaged conflict, deficit spending, and eroding relationships rob us of sustainability. Um, so every fellowship of the baptized has a life cycle. And just the fact that they have published this handbook should tell you that this is not an uncommon occurrence. Um, the fact that we need a handbook uh, means that there are a number of congregations that face similar challenges. No matter the good intentions of the remaining few members, 
if the congregation has become inward looking and makes little difference in its surrounding community, is depleting or has depleted its capital assets to pay for current expenses, is unable to maintain its property and have sufficient reserves for long, longer term property needs, if it cannot cover current operating expenses without cutting back on important ministries, if it is unduly reliant on sources of funding outside the offerings of members, and if it has insufficient number of members to serve on council or to hold legal congregation meetings, it may be time to consider closure and merger. Now, we think of McKee's Rocks as a white working class neighborhood. Um, in fact, our community has changed all around us, which is one of the points uh, that our uh, handbook points out. Um, Good Shepherd is right across the street from Stowe Rocks High School, where the student body is 66% two-thirds minority, 90% economically disadvantaged, and these figures are from U.S. News and World Report 2020. Meanwhile, our congregation, which is dwindling, remains 100% white and <clears throat> except for Sunday mornings. Uh, very rarely do we meet in the church, sometimes on Saturdays for creative hands, sometimes for meetings and rehearsals. But uh, most of us are just in and out of the community very quickly on Sunday mornings. The financial situation speaks for itself. Uh, we rely on member offerings. And since 2006, offering revenue from members' envelopes have been insufficient to meet the annual current expenses. We have electric, we have uh, water, we have bills, we have payroll, $53,000 in payroll for our pastor and our organist and our secretary. We also rely on rental income. We do rent part of the excess space in the main church building and in the educational wing. We have the Allegheny Intermediate Union unit uh, renting the bottom uh, wing of the church, uh, $14,400 a year, that's $1,200 a month. We rent the garage in the back alley for $50 a month, and <clears throat> we have social hall rentals, which is the basement rentals, and uh, the Alcoholics Anonymous gives us an offering of, usually it's it varies, it's about $200 a year. So all of that is income that goes directly to the church and it's used for operating expenses. Other sources of income, we sold the parsonage in 2007. Uh, we realized about $150,000 from that sale. It was used to pay back the church, uh, or pay back the cemetery, which had loaned the church 32,000 for a boiler replacement. Uh, the remaining balance was invested in a money market account, but all of those uh, funds have been exhausted by the church, paying for operating expenses and payroll as of 2020. And we've transferred money directly from Mount Calvary Cemetery from their bank accounts the total over the past three years has been close to 92000 In fact, it's gone over that now. Um, for this year alone, uh, you see the figure 25000 It's actually totaled uh, 27000 for 2020. Combined, we've uh, come close to about a quarter of a million dollars that has come from outside of uh, offerings and uh, direct rentals, which is what the evangelical Lutheran Church in America considers a pretty grave warning sign that we are not um, a viable congregation anymore. Attendance, as Robert Dudek likes to say, it's not about the money, it's about the people. Um, over the past uh, 10 years, we've averaged on Sunday mornings attendance over 40 in 2010. You can see that 
red line which shows you it goes up and down it goes up and down for easter and christmas and the summer vacation but this uh, trend line shows you that it started about 40 average per sunday in 2010 and uh, at the end of 2020 it's down to about 25 <clears throat> in fact during the pandemic it's actually um, there were several weeks that we didn't meet at all uh, but since we've reopened briefly for three months in September, October, November, we uh, averaged about 15 people per week. And that's including two people who were paid to be there, namely our pastor and our organist. So we've averaged about 13 people a week. Um, that's the number that attended the Last Supper in just little fun fact for you um, <clears throat> offerings have uh, also been in decline uh, you can see this uh, chart here the gray line uh, $1,500 shows you what we need to take in to meet our budgetary needs and the orange line shows the actual figures the red line again shows the trend uh, over the past three years offerings have fallen from two-thirds of budgeted needs to uh, one-third and it's actually dropped below that <clears throat> it's ended the year very badly of course with the pandemic so we need to make about 1500 a week we were making about 1100 a week average now we're under 500 so <clears throat> that deficit has been made up by cemetery money this is a list of some of the things <clears throat> that our cemetery has paid for uh, out of their accounts to keep um, Good Shepherd Lutheran Church running. I would point out to you, and you can stop the slideshow and look at this slide all you want to, but in 2019, we began, we began taking just major amounts of cash, 22000 25000 um, 20000 this year. Uh, this would actually be 20, 27000 So we've just become increasingly reliant on Mount Calvary Cemetery, which has not always had the surplus um, to be able to do that. And they have their own needs. This is a view of the cemetery. Many of us know a little creepy, foggy day there in uh, November when I took this picture. We reached out to a law firm that has performed a lot of work for the Southwestern Pennsylvania Synod of the Lutheran Church. They've done a lot of, uh, they've had a lot of experience with nonprofits, uh, cemeteries, and churches. And they informed us in December that, quote, our congregation has the ultimate responsibility for operation of the cemetery and the ultimate authority over the use of cemetery funds. End quote. However, they warned us, quote, nonprofit corporations must be careful how they handle funds that have been received for a specific purpose. Failure to do so could give rise to third party liability. That means the actual council president, hopefully <laughs> not the junior council members like myself, might be held responsible for the financial decisions of the church. The individual elected officers might be held legally liable. To continue, additionally, the cemetery has the fiduciary obligations to the families of those interred in the cemetery to make provision for long-term needs, including capital improvements, unforeseen casualties, future expansion and changes necessitated by law, etc. The cemetery should take care not to deplete funds that may be needed for both foreseen and unforeseen obligations. And finally, our lawyer reminds us that the Attorney General of Pennsylvania is charged with oversight of all nonprofit organizations, including churches. If there is some question as to the use of funds for purposes other than which they were dedicated, we may be running the risk of incurring the wrath of the Attorney General, in short. I'm paraphrasing. Uh, so we do have a, a legal obligation to run a business, namely the cemetery, 
and to keep that operating and functioning and to meet its responsibilities. The cemetery itself has deferred a number of maintenance issues. Here's an aerial view of the Mount, uh, present day uh, Mount Calvary Cemetery. We have, as you can see, 1,200 feet of road, roadway that needs to be repaved very soon. <clears throat> we have pruning and forestry issues. You'll see in the next shot the uh, actual photograph. We have 30 trees on the grounds that need to be cared for. We have uh, just basic lawn cutting and maintenance, um, as well as we need a new uh, excavator or backhoe, which is going to run in the neighborhood of $50,000. That's the machine that digs graves. And uh, to continue to drain those funds and divert them to our payroll and our operating expenses at the church uh, jeopardizes the historic trust families have placed in the cemetery since it was founded in the 1800s. Here's an aerial view. This was where the original church was located, in case you are wondering. This is where our church offices are. And you can see that there are still extensive grounds. Uh, there's at least 7,000 graves uh, that remain unsold. So this uh, cemetery is going to outlast all of us. It is going to continue for the rest of the 21st century, and it needs to stay in business in a sound and uh, responsible manner. Also, our church building has deferred major repairs, including a major roof repair, which we've been putting off, uh, estimated at at least uh, $80,000. There's been different prices uh, uh, suggested. Also, the stained glass has uh, suffered over the century and needs to be repaired. It's historic and uh, irreplaceable. One of the suggestions from our council president was just to let it fall out, which as an art historian, I will make a personal note, is uh, doesn't quite fly with me. There have been a number of proposals. Last year, there was uh, a meeting and a discussion, and uh, we did reach out to a, a, a real estate appraiser who has uh, informed us that there's not a lot of value in a church building except to another congregation. Uh, a developer might be interested in the educational wing and turning that into apartments, but um, it's not too likely that we will realize full market value. It's going to be a tough sell if we if we choose to uh, put this building on the market. Uh, it's most likely going to be of interest to another congregation. You can stop the show and read this slide if you want to. Uh, another suggestion was to move worship to Mount Calvary Cemetery Chapel, which is next to the office. It uh, only houses a few people, probably 12 to 15 during a pandemic, maybe 20 or a few more um, in normal times. It's used for, uh, obviously, for uh, small religious services uh, relating directly to the funerals. Uh, I've broken out those slides that were originally in this show, and I've created another video report. You'll find the link to some of the plans for uh, the cemetery um, and possibly worshiping there as a separate YouTube video link. Uh, just a personal note, my own grandparents, four of them are buried uh, at Mount Calvary Cemetery. Many of us have loved ones at, um, at uh, Mount Calvary Cemetery, and uh, many of us are planning to be buried there ourselves. And finally, I would go back to the document from the ELCA on leaving a legacy and remind you that internal dynamics such as resistance to change, long service by the same workers, mismanaged conflict, deficit spending, and eroding relationships rob us of sustainability. And I can tell you as a councilman for the past year, I've seen a lot of that. Uh, in 2020 alone, Good Shepherd lost 
two of its elected council members and one of its four cemetery board members. That's a total of 12 elected officials plus the pastor. Uh, but we've lost three of 12. We've lost a quarter of our elected officers in 2020 alone. We had one uh, resignation. We had two uh, deaths. Uh, Vera Bussey, uh, who was a longtime member of our church, and uh, uh, Ricky Witt, who just surprisingly and uh, shockingly passed away just before the holidays. And of the nine remaining elected officers, uh, only four of them regularly worship at Good Shepherd on Sunday mornings. Um, I think that speaks to the mismanaged conflict and eroding relationships. You can make of that what you will. Finally, going back to the leaving a legacy document again, when it becomes apparent that the ability of the congregation to remain effectively engaged in ministry is in jeopardy, schedule a consultation with your synod bishop to develop a plan of discernment. This plan will usually include conversation with synod leaders and leaders from neighboring congregations. A decision to close a ministry should be made only after an extended time of prayer, study, and conversation. And we have reached out to the synod. We have uh, we have made an agreement with the bishop's assistant to help us supervise our meetings and to explore possibilities, including merger, including um, sale of property, including uh, possibly worshiping at the Mount C uh, Calvary Cemetery site. Uh, there has been some opposition to that, but we were able to reach out to the synod and we are uh, currently uh, beginning discussions with Ascension Lutheran Church uh, in Kennedy uh, on the possibility of merging our congregations with them. And this is just a slide showing you that the merger of congregations is not the end of the world. It's been a long time since we've seen babies on a regular basis. Uh, <laughs> When I showed this report in, <clears throat> in November, I made the comment, maybe we don't want to have mergers uh, with crying babies, but um, it's a joyful experience, and to make new friends uh, is not a bad thing. Music worship will continue. Uh, creative hands will continue. The making of uh, Afghans and quilts and uh Music and joyous celebration will continue. It will just continue in a new form, in a new venue. And we do have uh, interest from a growing uh, congregation down the street uh, at the end of Broadway. Faithbridge Community Church has expressed interest in taking over our building, whether that's a purchase or whether that is uh, some arrangement we are only in the beginning of talking about that. That is another um, element to this possible future. But nobody is planning to bring the wrecking ball to Russellwood. Uh, the church will remain. Hopefully we will find a new congregation that will breathe new life into it. And we will again see joyous worship and a full house after the pandemic is long become a memory. Um, and so I leave you with this. The church on Russellwood Avenue has been called Mount Calvary, Good Shepherd. It's been absorbed. It has absorbed St. John's and Emmanuel's. It may bear a new name as the 20th century, 21st century proceeds, but your memories and our congregation's history will remain and God's work will continue in McKee's Rocks. You can study this document for yourself. It is available on the ELCA website. I'll have a link below this video and you can contact me and I have other materials and the history of Mount Calvary Cemetery on my blog and you'll find all those links. Thank you for your kind attention.